Hi there, welcome to Podcast 31. We're looking back quickly at the first half of 2020. We're gonna look forward at what to expect in the second half of 2020 with David Liggett. Next. Okay, so welcome to Hawk Podcast 30. I'm here with David Liggett. Hey, Mike. Great Good to morning, be here. Hey, sir. how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> Still awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you haven't read it, check out our Q2 summary blog on everything that happened in the data center markets in North America and Europe from second quarter. Uh, again, a big uh, industry, another one, or a big quarter for the industry. So again, we don't want to uh, go over that in too much detail. You can go read the blog, but uh, just talk about some of your highlights from uh, Q2. Yeah, I mean, the I think the... You know, just to hit the highlights quickly, you know, the big big buyers in this industry, which we tag with that hyperscale term, you know, they're continuing to buy, not just here in the U.S., but in, in Europe as well, uh, and other, you know, Asia Pack, other markets uh, too. So that certainly is, is one of them. Um, you know, Northern Virginia had a, a very big uh, demand period uh, this last 90 days. Uh, you know, Europe, uh, Frankfurt specifically was another market that uh, grew a lot. So, uh, you know, just I think the high level takeaways are we're in the middle, midst of a pandemic. The market continues to grow. There are certainly some challenges in that enterprise, you know, one cabinet to one megawatt level of, you know, transaction requirement. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that was expected. So all in all, I think most people are feeling pretty positive about the space, just given the dynamics of the market that we're in. So, yeah, if you want to read more, dasnerhawk.com backslash blog, check it out. Yeah, I think, you know, just drilling down on Northern Virginia for a second, you know, they we saw, and this is all in the blog, but we said, you know, they grew by almost 15% last year, which for a market that size, it's really incredible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we saw, you know, four to five deals comprise a vast majority of that yeah. growth. So, you know, what's, you know, that's been kind of par for the course for that market, but any additional commentary on, you know, what's driving those big, those big deals, do we see them continuing, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, I mean, network uh, and maturity of like the, the infrastructure and the providers in that market have, have driven a lot of that. Uh, you know, Ashburn is where a lot of that gets done and is still getting done today, even though we are seeing areas uh, to the south, like in Manassas, get bigger, uh, Leesburg, there's development taking place there. So there's there's some surrounding area, areas where you're starting to see some activity, but there's just a continual commitment to the world's largest data center market, and it doesn't seem like it's going to let up. So, uh, you know, from our perspective, you know, we think, you know, we'll talk about it here in a minute, but think it will grow, you know, in the future. Yeah, so yeah, again, speaking of not letting up, let's pivot and talk about, you know, what do we see now that we're kind of at the halfway yes. point of the year? Uh, you know, certainly, it's, this was, you know, I'm going to put in a CrossFit analogy here. This oh, is what this feels like. Hey, CrossFitters, listen up. If you've ever done the workout Murph, it's <laughs> a big benchmark everyone usually does on Memorial Day. We did it on 4th of July this year. Yes. You run a mile, yeah. 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, then run a mile. Yes. This kind of feels like you're on, like, you're about to go run your second mile. Like you've been through the ringer, you've been a ton of work, you're tired, and you kind of just like, you kind of just run out of the gym. Usually you're kind of shaking your head, you're yes. throwing your arms out, and you go, all right, now I got to buckle down That's and get that last mile knocked out. Yeah. When I've done this. Oh, yeah. If you've never seen David Liggett in the <laughs> extreme pain cave under duress, which most people haven't because he's a very composed individual, <laughs> however, it is a sight to behold. This is what it feels like. So there's been so much activity, so yeah. much, I don't call it pain, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and in, in the data center market has been a good pain yes. of growth. Yep. So now we're up, take a breath. What do we think is going to happen over the second half of the year? And I think you had some kind of key trends that you thought would go, what happened over the second half of the yeah. year? So let's talk, let's talk through them. You know, so first one is, you know, we talked about the biggest of the big buyers, the hyperscale yep. guys who are taking down 20, 30, 40, 50 megawatts at a time. You know, do we think that's going to continue? What will that, what will those specific, um, segment of buyers look like yeah. in the second half of the year. Yeah, I think the buying signs still there are pretty good. Uh, you know, especially considering where what what's happened in the first half of the year. I don't know, you know, I don't believe that it will be at the pace that it's been, like the demand in the second half will be equal to what it's been in the first. 
but I think that it will be competitive to that, which will lead to some really interesting, like historical demand level years, you know, and at the end of the year, when we look back, we'll be able to say 2020 was a, uh, you know, one of those years, like we would look back to on 2018. Um, so I think from that perspective, the bigger buyers, I think are evaluating where the market is headed, how the pandemic, um, you know, it's very clear that those bigger buyers are making some bets on, you know, where the demand is today and where it will be down the road. So I think from that perspective, you'll continue to see some of that big buying take place. Um, you know, when you get to that enterprise level that we talked about, you know, that's, that's, I think the sector that every, that, that most people in the industry are, are trying to understand, trying to figure out what that will look like in the next, you know, six months. That, in my opinion, was the area that was most hard hit, you know, by the pandemic. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, try and break them down. I mean, one would be, hey, you have an IT team that's, you know, running a project where we're going to expand our infrastructure by X, Y, and Z. Pandemic hits, and it, it becomes less about how do we expand and more about how do we just reset our company so that people can work from home? Do we have the infrastructure needed to do that? So that was one thing that I think paused a lot of those opportunities. You know, the second thing really was around, you know, companies losing their value. I mean, you know, if you just think about where the, what the stock market did, you know, when in the midst of the pandemic. So, you know, a lot of companies, when that happens, will go into a, we just need to survive mode. And that pauses a lot of those opportunities. And then the third thing is, you know, I think that a number of those will are probably dead or gone. You know, they, they won't they won't come back. But there will definitely be, I think, in the third quarter, fourth quarter, companies that start to go, okay, this is the world we're in now. It's different, but at least we have a more of a parameter framework around what we're doing. And they'll start to feel more confident about what things look like through the rest of the year and then and 2021. So I, so I do think that demand will pick up Q3, Q4, but, um, you know, probably not to the level that it was in 2019. Yeah, let me back you up to the like talking about the big buyers. Yes, specifically around the Northern Virginia market. As far as you, know, you look at all the growth that's happening there, what does that do? You know, how does that change companies' development approach for the second half of the year? Are yeah, they, you know, it oh, seems like you know to the casual observer, it yes. seems like any money, any capital you could possibly deploy, you, that's a great market to deploy it in. Now, there's obviously more to it than that. But sure. Talk about like when you're talking to the providers. What are they thinking as far as development for the second half of the year? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great question, and I would say a couple of things. I mean, we there's more money looking at the data center space today than there's ever been, you know, for good reasons. Uh, so that's one thing just to, to note. Northern Virginia is especially interesting, number one, because it's where the biggest deals get done, biggest transaction requirements are, number two, because you have the land in certain areas to grow. So, you know, some of the trends that we've seen over the last several years are now, now – you know, one story data centers that were built like in 2011, 2012, 2013. Now, you know, in 2015, 2016, were two story data centers. Now we're seeing three story data centers being built. So, you know, I think data center operators are getting smarter with how they are positioning their sites. Uh, there has been a lot of land banking. We talk about this a lot, but Northern Virginia, uh, you know, has, there's certainly a lot of planned capacity. So if you get on our website and look at our Hawk Insight tool, we show like where, how much planned capacity is in a market. So we're tracking that, which is, kind of a, a view into future supply. Um, but I think that a number of those companies went from having capacity available in Q3, Q4 2019 to not having anything, like literally uh, in Q1 and Q2 2020, which is crazy to think about. So uh, I think there's a number of them that are starting new development projects like as we speak. Uh, and uh, it makes sense. You know, you have to if you want to meet the demands of people that value scalability, speed to market, flexibility, you have to have campuses, uh, you know, the pathway to growth in place so that when those those opportunities come along, you can meet the need, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think we'll see an increase in construction in Northern Virginia over the next, you know, not just on deals that have been won, but uh, on deals that will, you know, be done in the future in the next, you know, six to 12 months. All right, so talk about you know other markets. Yes, there are there are more than one data center market there in North is. America. It's not just Northern That's Virginia. Right. That's right. Uh, you know, and and you know, shameless plug here. We're expanding our coverage of which markets we're doing. You know, deeper analysis on. Yep. Uh, which was our insight tool you just mentioned. So, talk about some of the markets that you're looking at second half of the year. You know, for some to be some activity or yep. what type of growth you're going to see there. 
Yeah, so I would say Portland's really interesting. It is a you know secondary market just because there's not as many providers there, but it is certainly active. Uh, so I think that's a market that's really interesting. Um, you know, Chicago. So uh, one of the content pieces we put out here, thanks to the great Rhett Gill, uh, was about the Chicago tax incentives. Mm. Uh, and we started to see that, uh, you know, I, I would say be a factor in winning some bigger opportunities for that market in the second quarter. Um, so I would say just keep your eye on that area because I think that's a, certainly an interesting, um, that's, a, that's a market where people want to be. There's been challenges uh, to getting there, but the tax incentive piece certainly is off the, is is a positive and not a negative there anymore. Uh, Northern New Jersey had another really strong absorption quarter, so that's a market I, that has I think been surprising to most in the industry. It's set you know pretty quiet for the last four or five years. Um, What's driving that Northern New Jersey growth? You know, a lot of the financial companies that are starting to uh, either expand. Uh, grow, recalibrate based on, you know, software or hardware demands changing, et cetera. So, you know, that's also a market that like was really active in 2011, 2012, 2013, and then kind of got quieter over time. And so if you think about if, if you got a 2011, 2012, 2013, a five-year deal, a seven-year deal, a 10-year deal, those deals are starting to roll. So I think companies naturally will start to make some decisions there. So those are some of the markets that were interesting. I mean, always, always stuff going on in Phoenix, Dallas, Atlanta, uh, so keep your eye on those places as well. Yeah, and if you can, Red, there's a, I know you did a pod with Andy Svengross. Yes, Svengross, uh, yes. In, about Chicago and yes. tax incentives. So yeah. a little bit more information on what you just said there is in yes. that. Um, you know, you did another one, another talk with uh, Dan Scarborough. I did. Who does work for us in Europe. Yes. Uh, so, you know, if you want to preview some of that and talk about yeah. H2 as far as it pertains to Europe as well, what are you seeing there? Yeah, I mean, I think the some of the you know the challenges there obviously are different than different than the challenges in the U.S. Um, mainly because you have different. Is that another know, political statement? Yes, you are just Gosh, full of them man. today. <laughs> Cranking them out. Uh, you know, you've got well, obviously like different countries that are you know really where you're seeing massive growth versus you know the U.S., which is. Um, you know, obviously easier in some ways to develop in. So I think. Uh, you know, you're certainly like one thing that we will see is, you know, continual hyperscale maturity. Uh, one of the things we wrote about in the blog, but I think will play out in the, the future quarters is the second and kind of third tier markets over there and how companies really want to get uh, efficient there. Uh, and sometimes even by, by bypassing the normal big European markets. So that's that's something that I think will continue to play out, um, you know, moving forward. And I think it just points to like the global business that the data center infrastructure world, you know, that we're in. I mean, Dan on our on our uh, podcast that we had made a great comment about, you know, he's like, I see the world is actually just one big data center. And I think what, you know, he's meaning by that is just the fact that you if you want to serve your customers well, you know, you really have to think from a global perspective, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that that can be small businesses, obviously, uh, you know, on the way up to like large companies. So that demand there will continue to grow. And it wouldn't surprise me if it outpaces like second half Europe outpaces what it did in the first half. Okay. You know, another topic that's been a bit of a buzzword around our industry is the edge. The edge. So do you see that? The edge. You know, and it's almost like the the other shoe will fall, or maybe I don't, that's not the right that's yeah. not the right metaphor. But it's it seems like it's always next quarter the edge yeah. is going to have a big impact. So you know, looking at the next two quarters, what do you see, if any, the impact of you know, edge development, focus on the edge, whatever you want to call it, you know, impacting the markets? Typically, what we're focusing on is would be referred to by the edge guys as yep. core data centers. Sure, the the ones that the edge data centers are tied yep. back to. So. You know, what do you see as far as edge? You know, we you talk to a lot of people about people come to ask us about the edge. It's not been a a, a main focus of ours. So, right. You know, what are you seeing in that regard? You know, it seems like you've got a number of providers that are positioning themselves to handle demand moving forward. And it's not just, um, you know, there's really different ways you can approach it. You have some companies out there that are specifically focused on edge, building solutions to kind of meet the needs of future customers. You have big providers that are, you know, trying to develop uh, solutions to meet the needs of their current customers. 
Uh, and so it's really been interesting to watch these groups play in that space and figure out how they are in a position, not necessarily like in 2020 first half, but down the road to meet the demand. We don't see, uh, I mean, the, all, in my opinion, all of the product development is still ahead of, I think, what people believe the demand will be. Um, and that's something that I think you'll, you, you know, I think those that are doing this work will tell you. But uh, I think there's a lot of investment, a lot of thinking, a lot of smart people focused on figuring out how to meet this demand moving forward. And it comes in all shapes and sizes. And that's what, you know, I think you've seen in the last, you know, 90 days or some companies make some decisions to be in a position to meet that demand moving forward. So, you know, when that hits, I think we're all, you know. Yeah, the, the ceiling of the edge is extremely high. Sure. Given what we think, where we think technology is Yeah, going. Where te what technologies mm -hmm. would be impacted by that, et cetera. But I think certainly we're moving towards it when it hits I don't know. I mean, we're probably still 12 to, you know, in my opinion, 12 to 36 months from seeing, in my, you know, something significant take place that would, you know, change that market. All right, Dave. Well, great thoughts as always. Uh, again, we're very excited about the second half of the year. Um, again, we're, we'll continue to track it. We just published our 20th quarter of Inside Data, so we are showing no signs of slowing, as That's Willy right. Wonka would say. That's right. Just uh, speeding it up. Just keeping it going. Yep. So, again, plenty of resources that Rhett will link in the show notes uh, from the Q2 blog, you can go back and read the Q1 blog, which put those into greater context. Uh, a ton of other stuff there on the site, on our YouTube channel, on LinkedIn. Uh, check it out. We'll catch you next time.